Hi, I'm Christopher. Hi, Sam. everybody. This is Bob. Hey, guys. Bergen. This is Stephanie Shea. Hey, I'm Veronica Taylor. Hey, everybody. This is Billy West. Hey, guys. I'm Ryan Colt. Hi, this is Kyle Abraham. Hi, this is Kira Buck. Hi, I'm Jameson Price. Hi, I'm Sean Chiplock. You are listening to Two Dads. Hey, you're listening to me. Two Dads. 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 What's up, guys? It's another episode. It's just too long. Too many voice actors that we've talked to. We gotta start. We got. We got cut. Cut it down. Let's get it done we gotta, in like we gotta five stop seconds. Talking to these people. Just layer them all up. <laughs> yeah. Today no. we are doing a fantastic show. We got Super Smash Brother characters. Obviously, we love Super Smash Brothers. It's one of the like most game played games that I don't know we've probably done. And at one point in time. I, I was pretty fucking good at the game. Not as much anymore. I haven't played in a decade, but it's one of those games that was probably going to be on like the Mount Rushmore of games from our childhood, from our past. Yeah. I mean, we played the hell out of this game growing up. Uh, I have played Ultimate quite a bit. I have all the characters unlocked, which takes a long ass time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Smash Ultimate. But man, they have added so many characters to this game. How, how many are they up to now? Like 80-something? 80 80-something, 80 yeah. yeah. It, it is quite a bit. It is a, a a hysterical amount. And, you know, I think I got a pretty decent mixture of newer and older characters on my list. I don't know about you. but So yeah. we can jump into it with my number five, which I went with, I, I think, the newest add i went with sora nice as my number five he seems to be and i've had minimal interaction with him as a character honestly Uh, he's a pretty solid character his it seems like it mid-air movement is really solid with his you know floaty jumps that you would get i love how they've taken some of these characters from other games and really brought to life their true natures from their games and elements from their origins and transferred that into yeah i mean you can use all his aga attacks quote unquote aga moves um Mm -hmm. i like to call them um you got obviously the the fire element the lightning element and the ice element and you can do some really cool stuff with those including like i mean you can float underneath somebody and then strike them with the lightning yep and from and i like how them. it alternates between them. the yeah the moves so you gotta think about what's coming up yeah you can't just spam it however there there are some things you can do there's some cool tricks and stuff you can do with him but yeah i i like that i like that he's you super him. useful and um yeah he's really light and so a good hit can knock you out but i've always been that kind of float and evade sort of character so for me he's kind of a perfect setup for for what i like to do in the game well my number five is also fairly newer to the game not as new as sora as sora was the last character it was the first of the dlc characters and my my number five is joker from persona 5 oh nice that's a really really solid character for the game He's he's a higher tier. I don't know how, you know, in competitive how he is now, but I know for a while he was way up there. He has way more strengths than he does weaknesses overall. Yeah, definitely. You know, he's he's got a slimmer form factor. He's very fast. When Arsene comes out, he gets super strong and is just absolutely obnoxious <laughs> with that. But that's also the downside is when Arsene's not there... He's not as strong. He's not as beneficial. So you really have to plan around bringing Arsene out. You know, his grappling right, right. hook is also super... I don't, I don't know that you would say OP, but his recovery for being off stage and being able to grapple onto it is pretty great. <laughs> it's, it's a nice sort of mixture character. Not that he has good range, but he can cover that really fast. Yeah, he's got the great he's got combos. the gun in there, so he can get a little bit of range to get some evasion in, to recover, to set up different right. combos. He has combo throws, which is really cool, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> and he's really good at edge guarding too. So he's a really good overall character. And I don't know, I love the design. I love that they again, they took these characters, these new characters and made it feel like they're 
original character, not just a clone of an existing character. You know, you have him in there and he summons his persona and will beat your ass with yeah. it. And I love yeah. that. I absolutely love that. That and all the different colors and the outfits you can do. Right, right. You gotta <laughs> you gotta love it. My number four, I went with a link and it was young link. Young and that link. Was mainly it's to me he's he's the best of the links. I mean hit young link and toon link, there really isn't much difference there. Um That's fair. but <laughs> uh, over bigger link just because he he's smaller, so he's got uh, the ability to, to yeah duck under some attacks and stuff like that and link's attack variety is as such that it makes him very versatile especially once you learn it and you learn how to kind of combo and flow through his attack style because you've got the bombs you've got the the uh what um oh, oh what what what's it called the fucking the the fucking arrows and shit <laughs> sorry <laughs> I don't know why I blanked on 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 bow and arrow. I, I don't know. That's that's a yeah. classic. Almost in every well, in every Legend of Zelda, there is a bow and arrow. Well, so. Not just Legend of Zelda, but most things we watch all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's you've fair. got the boomerang, which is really fucking useful. But then you have his flash attacks and stuff like that that are really, when timed right, you can knock the fuck out of somebody. You know, really blast him out of the the arena with that shit so he's got this nice little balance to him at the same time he's not he's not slow you know he's not ganondorf uh <laughs> sl sluggish motherfucker i don't think anybody's he's, that slow <laughs> he's quick um i you know the only thing he's got he doesn't have going for him. he kind of he's got a pretty decent double jump but there are better now there's much better now oh yeah oh yeah I mean, we we were talking about Sora. Sora's double jump right. is obnoxiously <laughs> high. You can literally, from any map, get back to solid ground from anywhere on the screen. Just about. Sora. Just about. <laughs> but Link's not too bad. I've just there's better. I guess I would say there's better double jumps than than his. But for me, he's a really balanced character and yeah. and small enough to use defensively. Well, my number four is also a newer character to the game and it's the hero from Good. from the Dragon Quest games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I look, we're talk we we were talking about making a character feel like they truly came out of their game and was put into Smash. This character right. does it so well, especially with his special moves and his down special having random selections of magic and spells and different things you can do. So it truly feels like he's casting his spells just like you would yeah. in Dragon Quest. And I just, and, and I think best, that's one of the, the best part, coolest freaking things. The best part of introducing this, because it wasn't all like this from the beginning. It wasn't all smoothly um, enveloping characters into the game. Um, I think like, um, Mario is a great character, really cool, but how much of playing with Mario reminds you of playing a Mario game? Not, not as much. Yeah. So though the great thing they're doing with this is they're not, they can, they're bringing in these characters that could be like OP as fuck and they're just not they're They're making it so they're not broken completely. Mm -hmm. And that's... they've balanced them out pretty well. One of the big things that I really like about Hero is it's not just Dragon Quest XI's main character. It's not just his hero. They brought in palette swaps for three other Dragon Quest games, including my all-time favorite, which is Dragon Quest yeah. Eight, And his name is <laughs> Eight because... You know, original Why not? names. Because you would. <laughs> because you would. Because it's Nintendo, and so, that's what they do. <laughs> you've got Dragon Quest three, you've got Dragon Quest four, and then Dragon Quest VIII's main hero. And I love it. It's purely aesthetic. It doesn't actually change anything about the gameplay or anything. But it's just super cool being able to choose these different, like almost a different character and switch it up every so often you know which one's your favorite that and one thing i didn't talk about with joker and we haven't mentioned so far is the final smash the final smash to this is so freaking awesome because his giga slash not only oh, brings yeah, yeah. in 
the heroes that are palette swaps in this game, but it brings in every main hero from the Dragon Quest series. And they all yeah. do this Giga Slash <laughs> attack that just completely obliterates. And I love it. You know, Joker, he gets the, they get their all out attacks right, almost right. exactly pulled from Persona 5. This one, it's so much more unique in the nostalgia factor with bringing all of these characters that I've grown up and loved and played as in this game. It's It was so much fun. So cool. I, I love that they did that. And again, he doesn't feel like he's just thrown into the Smash universe. It feels like he was yeah, truly yeah, yeah. pulled into it. So I started from newer characters and uh unintentionally i'm just getting older and older and older <laughs> with my characters but, but my next one is a character that is at the same time simultaneously he's the most annoying to play as and the most annoying to play against and that's mr gaiman a- ampersand watch <laughs> mr game ampersand watch did you really i just believe that's i believe that's how it's pronounced mr game and watch d- correct me yeah yeah <laughs> Um, he is like, when, when you first got this character, it's like, he's wildly, like, he seems wildly unpredictable. And well, he's just... wildly unpredictable. His, his <sighs> smash attack is a random number with the hammer. And if he hits you with a one, it does nothing. <laughs> if he hits you nothing. with a nine, yeah. he could knock you off the map at full health, like at 0%. <laughs> you know, he's obnoxious. But he is, he is ob- like, yeah, he's fucking obnoxious, but it makes him, if you're good with him, you're fucking good with him, man. And he is annoying yeah, as shit to if play If you're against. good with his standard attacks and then you just happen yeah. to get a good hammer smash, you can completely dominate the battlefield that way. Yes, yes. So I just love the randomness of him, the randomness of the time of them throwing that character in. And you're just kind of like, what the fuck? And this is before, you know, the Wii Fit character and all that shit where we now kind of anticipate some what the fuck moments with super smash brothers <laughs> but at the time this was like what <laughs> really Look, the one thing like, this that is, game and watch really like next- kind of gave me hope for was that we would get a paper mario and they never oh. did they never did they're like i'm like sweet a 2d character this would be awesome yeah. no no paper mario yeah yeah you get mr game ampersand watching like what next you're gonna put a fucking rob in the game right yeah okay what Didn't are they going to do next? <laughs> Duck hunt? <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. It, start, it was the start of something great. Plus, it was a badass fucking character. Man, getting hit with a random nine ruins your day. It ruins your whole day. <laughs> getting hit with a frying pan ruins your fucking day, man. You know? <laughs> Everything about that character can ruin your day really fucking quick. Well, my number three is taking us back to Felix's number five. Because he had oh, to be nice. on my list. Yeah. It's Sora. And no, Sora Sora isn't my favorite character. As good as he is, as the, much as I like the He can the move series, up there for me. I just don't have enough time with him yet. He's so new. I just haven't been able to, to really play around with it. But he could I think he could easily make his way up to maybe two for me. Well, this is this is why he's number 3 for me is because he is newer. There's still a lot that I haven't discovered with him. He, he's definitely up there in the tier lists. Just he's yeah, a yeah. fantastic character. I absolutely love his palette swaps. You have all these different costumes that are based on different outfits and in forms he had the throughout game. the game. Yeah. So you have his original Kingdom Hearts, you have Kingdom Hearts 2, 3D, 3, and then you also have his Timeless River, you have his Ultima outfit, you have yeah. Valor form, Wisdom form. The the treatment they gave Sora in this game was just fantastic. I absolutely loved it. He's a character that is kind of easy to use, whether you're first playing the game or have been playing a long time. It's not that he's, he's broken, easy to jump into, but he's but he's he's, he's user friendly. Yeah, he is user friendly, but he's not the easiest to master. Right, which is why I said like he's good for beginners, but he's also good for people who have been playing a long ass time. Oh yeah. You get him down, you can really combo the shit out of some people with him, especially with as mm-hmm. long as he can float around and stay in the air. And like, one thing ridiculous. I haven't mentioned, again, I'm kind of remembering things as I'm going. 
them adding these characters in, especially, you know, Joker, Hero, and Sora, in my opinion, adding yeah. in the music and their new levels and the, the little Easter eggs you get in the background of what's going on, that was a big portion of why I chose these characters as well, because the music and the levels were so great on top of all of it. Getting Sora's final smash of sealing the keyhole on Hollow Bastion. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, was... man. It's just... <laughs> The nostalgia. I absolutely love it. That takes us to my number two. And my number two has to be probably my favorite characters to play with. And it's Ice Climbers. From the game, Ice Climbers. Really? Ice Climbers? I love Ice Climbers, man. Why? Because I was really good with them back in the day. And when you're really good with Ice Climbers, you piss everybody off. You just do. Because you're the way their attacks move... It's not that they're not unpredictable, but they move in a way at the time that wasn't what people were used to because of them throwing each other and really working together to progress through the screen and stuff. Also at the time, like their double jump, it gave you a little extra on it. Their attacks could See, be I, I always lost fuck. one or the other. I always did. I could never <laughs> keep both of them on the map. You had to be good with them, or else you, you, you did. And it took with them. it took practice to to actually be able to be good with them. And at one point, I could do okay, but at one point, if one of them gets knocked off the map, I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm just screwed. <laughs> there, there's like, no I coming don't back know what from to it. Do, but like their hammers were good. And if you're using weapons or not weapons, but items, I should say then you can really do uh, some extra combos with them with the double jumps. And I just enjoyed those characters. They were fun to play. It was somebody not many people ever went out of their way to use. And when, you know, you always had that list of characters of, okay, you don't play with these characters. If you play with these characters, you're just saying you want to win. And we get it. Okay, you're pissed off because you lost the last couple of games. So I'm going to go in and use this character because he's OP as fuck. And, you know, so you had to kind of work around those sort of characters. And that this was what I chose. My number two. Honestly, my number two is my number two for one reason, pretty much. And it's Falcon Punch. It's Captain Falcon. Nice. Do you want to know what my number one is? Captain Falcon? Captain Fabulous! Because I always Dude, went with the I pink always and white. Go with, <laughs> I always, always go with that one, too. That one or, like, the all, like, the black suit with the, the red and yellow. I like that one, too. But Nope, I've never not been Captain Fabulous. I'm always Captain Fabulous when I use <laughs> Captain Falcon. And honestly, it's because... No, he's not the fastest by any stretch of the imagination. No, he's he's, he's a not the faster slowest, Ganondorf, though. essentially, is what yes. he is. And if you know how to time his slow movements, he is fucking ridiculous, man. You just can't even... Oh, yeah. Like, his Falcon and, Punch is yeah. so slow that it's almost impossible to get hit by it because... <laughs> Or to land but the when hit. You time but when you time it off perfectly, when somebody of combos, is falling yep. or something and you fucking time it right, it is the most it's satisfying the most move satisfying. in the fucking game. Because <laughs> really you know is. you shouldn't hit somebody with it. <laughs> but when there's a crowd of three people and they're not paying the fuck attention and you blast all fucking three of them, it is the most gratifying and satisfying feeling it when is, you're playing this it is. game. And one of the cool <laughs> things with him too is... On certain levels, on certain maps, he's capable of wall jumping. So you can even like jump off yeah. of walls. He has very good aerial combat. He's extremely he does, he really fast does. running from side to side. Like he is one of the fastest in straight movement, but his attacks right. are quite a bit slower. His attacks are a lot slower. But uh, the great thing about him, if you're able to do the dodge, what was it? The, the shield dodge. What was that called back in the day? Oh, I forget what nickname we gave it. <laughs> but if you're able to to pull that off, you could combo in with him very fucking smoothly. Mm -hmm. And especially because his his normal attacks were actually really good. They were really good. You and could KO. He has he has a good variety, a pretty high variety of attacks that will KO because he's just right. really strong. 
And so, like, for me, the reason why he's my number one is because everybody had their specialty character, the character they knew inside and out better than the rest of them. And for me, that was Captain Fabulous. Well, for me... Let me guess. Go for it. I'm going to guess Zero Suit Samus, but it could just be normal Samus. No, I was never actually a Samus player. Or it's going to be your your go-to Mario. Nope. No, on no, neither it Mario- account. It's it- close. It's close. It's Ike. Ike. Ah, Talk about a slow oh, character. <laughs> Ike is slow. But here's a, the, the few things that I really liked about him. He hits hard as hell. He has one of the largest reaches yeah, of the yeah. game. And he's yeah. heavyweight. So it's really difficult to launch him and to KO him. So honestly, like his high damage on almost all of his attacks, he can KO you super easily. You literally just need to be able to dodge and be able to move around. You get up in the air, you get some aerial attacks, you do some of his bigger attacks, which are long lasting. So they get some big damage in for a longer period. It's fantastic. But there's the drawback. We we talked about this with the high the the lag on the startup on his attacks and everything. So if you don't combo them, if you don't get these kind of timed perfectly, it's going to be a struggle. Well, and and it's part of that is knowing people and knowing the people you're playing against and figuring out their fighting style to figure out where they're going to try and predict where they're going to be so that you can have that timed out perfectly for when they get there. But Yeah, I always kind of lean towards Marth in this sort of... The reason was, was I didn't have the patience to try and learn Ike. I just didn't have it in me. So, you know, like you said, it's it's one of those you've got to... You got to know how they flow. You got to know their timing. But it's a fantastic character, though. I love how strong he is and how hard he hits. I've always been a high damage kind of person in games. And... He has one of the most powerful final smashes, dealing upwards of 72% damage with his final (laughs) smash, which is obnoxious, to be honest. But I I, I had to pick him. He's been my favorite for for a long time. When they started coming out with the Amiibo, the very first one, I was like, I have to absolutely have this one. It was Ike. Right, right. It was Ike. Well... You know, some of the other good ones, like uh, Ness was an annoying character to have to (laughs) play against. You know, this little floaty fuck with a baseball bat. Um, I love what they have done with the Pokemon in this game. Yeah, where you can just kind of choose one. You don't have to switch between them. They're all And the Poke Trainer now is really good, too. But, like, Mewtwo, like you would expect to be strong as fuck, really isn't as Mewtwo was strong pretty as strong like, off the bat he, but yeah, he's been but like, balanced you get, like, out Pichu or Pikachu down like man you're going to be doing I some know shit if I know if I'm not mistaken some of the like real high tier for competitive play is like uh, Wolf and Falco those are two right, like right. really high tier characters I've seen in, um, in, in I competitions always loved, I always loved to use in Little Mac honestly like um, if I go random you know, I'm fine like, playing I, with just about anybody, but right. I like seeing Cloud and and Sephiroth. So, yeah, you know, we didn't when they brought Sephiroth, Sephiroth in. is a playable character, just not in a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when they brought Sephiroth in for the last wave of DLC, that was huge to so many fans because we've had Cloud. Yeah since the yeah. wii u and, and we've had cloud on in. everything you know <laughs> everybody's been a cloud before <laughs> i do you have a favorite level or should we save that for another time you know let's do that for another time i feel like that's a, a top five in and of itself is top five cool, cool. levels and design music the whole nine yards will be part of that it honestly i i have to call out a few others because you know i mentioned hero how you have the palette swaps and you can have the dragon quest three four and eight characters they also right. added in these palette swaps for some older characters that we've had in the game for a little while like olimar now has uh you have the palette swap with alf with bowser jr you have the palette swap with all seven of the koopa kids so larry roy wendy iggy morton lemmy and ludwig which 
that's pretty cool. You know, Roy's my boy, so if I ever end up, for whatever reason, choosing to play as him, I always right. choose Roy. <laughs> Hell and yeah. then Steve, bringing Love in Roy. Steve from Minecraft and being able to play as Alex, a zombie, or an Enderman is super fun. It's just, they have really, re they really, with Smash Ultimate, they truly did make the Ultimate Smash Brothers game, in my opinion. Which is good, because I, I was kind of, I was not as optimistic with it at first. When they said but, they were bringing in wow. every single character ever released in a Smash Brothers game, I knew it was going to be good. They, yeah, but they're I not was limiting the roster. They're not leaving anything out, and then they're going to add even more characters. Add twelve more characters. That well, that was because huge. we did, I didn't. I didn't want to like between melee to brawl. There was some fall off from the melee was uh, by far the superior of the two. Yeah, there was some fall off. So I was still afraid of like them not correcting the fighting system and stuff like that to to make it a little more fluid than how they kind of kind of threw a wrench in things and see the thing that i really liked with smash ultimate is sakurai he listened to feedback he listened to the fans and really right, stepped right. up they made balancing changes where they really felt they needed it to be and where fans and and, and people really kind of set out and complained about things and his, with the DLC characters, his idea of I'm only going to bring in characters that are only and were originated in video games. So he didn't bring right. any characters that were originally anime characters or originally book characters. I loved that this is a video game and that's what he wanted it to be. And everything in it is going to represent Preach. that preach no it was it's fantastic <laughs> it's a it's a game series that's over 20 years old and it's still fun as fuck to play you know it is there's not many you can say that that are like that because all all these other games have evolved to an extreme extent this game is what it was still what it is and it's still so fucking fun they they find a way to keep it fresh also quick shout out to master hand where back in Melee, you could glitch and make him a playable character. <laughs> but in Smash Ultimate, in the World of Light, you could play as the Master Hand. But only in yeah. the World of Light. So, <laughs> shout out to Master Hand. For sure. Even though Crazy Hand would be the more fun one to play. With that being said, if you have... what well, I mean, we just want to know what your favorite character to play with is. Yeah, let us know who, who your Smash favorite Bros. character is. And if you want to play against us, let me know. Let we'll him know. We'll get it set up. We'll set it yeah. up. I've, I've, I've got the game. Some more. He'll I've have to come over here and play, but that's game fine. Game Boy still. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the the Game Boy one. i got to get Ultimate. The 3DS. Still. You do need to get Ultimate, dude. It's so good. But yeah, reach out. Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at 2DAP2020. You can email us at 2DAP2020 at gmail.com. Hit up our YouTube. Or if you're watching on YouTube, just comment in the, the, the comment section who your favorite. And like and subscribe because we legally are, are, are we're yeah, legally we, we supposed to, to be saying that. We have to talk about that. Yep. YouTube will send out hitmen if we don't. So we got to. Or or drones or drones. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'm allowed to say that. I think that's that's going to get us canceled. <laughs> Shit. We'll just cut it. We'll just cut it. It's fine. oh yeah, we're not live anymore. Edit powers activate. You got to do something there now. <laughs> do some sort of spinny effect or something. No, I'm just going to keep you looking like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but guys. Next time on Two Dads and a Podcast. So I racked my brain thinking about this next one, and I think I've got a great one. Oh. So we are going to pick our top five all-time anime feature movie. So a movie based that that is from an anime that is that has made a movie, like let's say your your Tree of Might, or or. Your you, you moving know, train. The, the, uh, I, I think the joke is starting to, to fall Badlands Rumble? Yeah. Trigun? It, it, the, that was a good one. That was a good one. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing that one yet. No. I'm just hoping if I say it enough, I'll, I'll will it into... Will it into existence? I, I don't think that's how it works. That's not how any of this works. The Cowboy Bebop movie was a good... Mm-hmm. Next week... Next week, we will have another one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was what I meant to say. Well, as always, thank you so much for listening. Love you guys. <laughs>